I'm Namimba Christine Kango. I play Gies. My father is Kango Moses and my mom is Namgolia Elizabeth. What made me fall in love with this game is I was in senior three. I remember I was in the village studying from a school called Savannah High School. Mm -hmm. That was my senior too. And then my dad was like, no, my kids, I want you to go and study in schools of Kampala. So I want to take you to Kampala. We were so happy because he had wanted to take us in our primary level, but he couldn't make it. But when it came to secondary level, he was like, I want you people to go there. Then he took us to a school called Bulova Secondary School. When I reached there, I found Bulova had a netball team. So those girls, they used to call me, Christine, you come, we can train netball. Me, I used to ignore them because I told them, yeah, I don't know how to play netball. I've never played netball. And they were like, no, your height is good. You can learn, you come and you go. I told them I don't want, I'm not interested. Reason being, it was a new school and it was a school from town. And me, I was studying in the village. So I wanted to concentrate on my books and I catch up with their standards. So I couldn't let them disturb me like with issues of netball what what. But still they sticked on me. You have a good height, you can learn netball. I refused. I remember we had a lesson of agriculture. We had we, we went to the farm. So we were there studying. Then a teacher sent a student to come and call me. So that student came came and she was like yeah, it was Mr. Kutesa. I was like, Mr. Kutesa is calling you. I left, I left the garden. I went to him. When I reached there, reaching there, he wasn't Mr. Kutesa. There was a football coach. He was training football. So I reached there, I found that football coach. I can't remember his name, but he talked to me was like, Tina, why can't you come and join Netball, what, what? I was like, no, I'm not interested. I don't know how to play, and I'm not interested. He was like, no, Tina, you have a good height. You can try. I was like, no, I can't try. Then he was like, OK, he wanted to kneel. Then to me, that was so big on me, for a big man to, to kneel for me. I was like, I remember I talked in, in, in Rusoga, I was like, Mbe. Yeah, then when I, when I talked that word, I was like, I am Soga. Then I was like, no, I'm not, I'm Soga. And I've heard you talking about that, that, that word. Then I told him, I'm from that side. He was, he, then also he was like, I'm also from that side. I also train Iganga boys football. Ah, we started jazzing in Rusoga. And at the end of the conversation, I accepted to go and train at Ubo. Yes, the, the following day, I went and I started training. I remember by that time, he was Coach Livingstone. He came, he started showing me how I'm supposed to shoot the ball, because I started with shooting. He taught me how to shoot the ball. I, I remember it was two days to the tournament. They had the tournament, it was Easter Cup. We were going for Easter Cup. So he taught me how to shoot, stand and shoot, sit down and shoot, squat and shoot. Then after those two days, we went for a tournament, Easter Cup. When we reached there where we were going to play from, even bef before going on court, for playing, many schools had come, and there was a lady I can't recall her name, but she came to me pretending that she knows me. So I was like, "Hey, my daughter, how are you? You you've forgotten me?" I was, I was like, "I don't know that this person." She was like, "I know you've forgotten me, but you come and I remind you." Then she took me aside, and she was like, "The good, the truth is, I don't know you." but I've seen your height, I'm interested in you. I want you to come and join my school. There is a, I remember that school, that team had not yet come. 
but she she was like my team is going to come you're going to see them but i want you to come and join us then she asked me are you on a bus or i was like no then she told me me i want to take you to the other school and i give you a bus away. yes it was. she told me it was going to be a full bus away. oh i was so happy because when i was in my primary my, my primary I had a neighbor and a friend, she was called Viola. She was an athlete. For her she was running, but I she was on a bursary. I could be there and say, how I wish I also had a talent. I could be on a bursary. She was like, Can you can I share your number with me? By that time I had no phone. I told her I don't have a phone. Okay, give me your daddy's number. Oh, your brother's number. I gave her my, daddy, my father's number and my nephew's number. She took them and she told me, you can't even go with you. I told her, no, I have to first finish my first term. Then I think I will come next term, the second term. She was like, it's fine, you can concentrate. But after, after, when the term ends, we are going to come for you. We can see your parents, then you come and join us. I told her it, it is fine. Then we played the game. After playing that game, um, students came and supported us. And, they, and I was so happy because of the morale and the vibe they were giving us. They could be outside and call me, Kango, Kango, our Kango. And I fell in love with the game, like, just like that. When the term ended, they came with the school bus up to my brother's place. My, my brother's place. My brother was staying in Bulova. He was a teacher in Bulova Primary School. I was in Bulova Secondary School. For him, he was a teacher in Bulova, in Bulova Primary School. So he was teaching there. I think they, they were communicating with the other school. So when the, ter the term ended, they came to my brother's home. He, my brother came and picked us, us at school. Then we went together in the village. Yes, with a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We reached at home. We found there my parents. They were there. My brother had communicated to them. They were there eagerly waiting. So they talked. They told my dad and my mom when this girl we are going to pay for her full bursary. All she needs to come with is a mattress and a suitcase and books. But we are going to pay her school fees and the school uniform. The school is Medina Islamic Secondary School. Yes. So I went to the school. When I reached there, ah, the situation was not good for me. Anyway, before going, I remember I was in school. Then me I, me, I thought we are going at home. They see my parents. Then for them, they go back. But when they reached there, they insisted that they are going with me. And I was like, no, I'm tired of school. I've been on school. At least let me rest like for two weeks, three weeks, then I will come. They were like, no, our principal is going to Mecca. So he went, he went first to see you. He makes for you a budget, then he goes. I was like, okay, it's fine, let's go. When I reached there, I found, I found for them, they had not yet ended their end of term. Yeah, I think it was like two, two to three days to the end of, of their term. Yeah, I found their students, they were doing the exams, but they could look at me because no, of the height. Like, oh. I think they had not yet met a, a person okay. like me. Mm. Yeah, so they could look at me. Mm. So I went and I met the principal. The principal was called Shea Busura. He talked to me and he gave me some allowance. And the, they handed me to a girl called Shakira take care of me she was she was good she indeed she took good care of me I can't forget her 
the end of term ended, but for us netballers, we stayed there, yeah. Camp. Yes. We were in the camp, we started training, but me, okay, where I was studying from, we used to take tea, not porridge. So there I found their porridge, and it was new to me. When Shakira brought a cup of porridge, I was like, no, me, I'm not going to take porridge. Yeah, I want tea. They had to go to the staff room to get for me tea. Mm, I trained there. We trained for like one week. Then after I told them I want to go back home. I'll come back when the term has, start, has started. They were like, no, Tina, we have to train so hard. We have to teach you basics, how to play, in that we can catch up with what with the team yeah because for them they were more they were far better than me because me i think they took me because of my height they saw something in me that they can teach me something yeah but where your training became more serious it was in my senior four in my senior first year i was in Medina islamic mm, we had a coach called Hamza Katend. Hamza Katend came and started training us. Started giving me basics how to post, how to shoot, how to move. We trained. When we trained, we had we had zones. Yeah. So we went for those zones they were in Ibudo. When we went in Ibudo, I remember those those people of Vudo, they had not yet they had not yet seen me. So it was their first time to see me. And I gave them hard time because I remember Vudo was always the champion of zones. And it it used to go on finals with Medina Islamic. And it could it could win with a, a big range. Like let me say by ten, by fifteen, but it was finals. But it could be like it could be of a big range. But that year in my senior four when we went there when we played them, still Vudo was the champion. But it won us with one goal. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And I gave them hard time to the extent of when I went, when we went back home, I think they had to look for my brother's number. I don't know where they got it from. But they had to call him. Because I remember the HM of Udo told them I want that lady. I want that girl to come at my school. And Udo and Madina, they were good friends. At first, they wanted to steal me right from there. But they sat down and they were like, we are friends with Madina. If we happen to steal her, it's going to show a, bit, a bad image and it might kill our friendship so they were like let's wait for her to finish what to finish her senior four we will go and talk with them in senior five i finished my senior four in Medina islamic after finishing my senior four i went back in the village when i went back in the village there is a coach in Nkumba. He trains volleyball. He called me to go and train volleyball. Yeah, in Nkomba. So I went there. But still Madina had Madina called me. Madina school. They called me to go for a camp. I was in my vacation. I told them I'm not feeling well but I was in Nkomba training volleyball. I trained volleyball like, I think it was for one month. Then I went back home for, for Christmas festivals. Uh, after Christmas, again, I went back to Medina for my senior five, but exams had not yet come back. So we were there in a camp training, waiting for exams to come back. When exams came back, school had not yet started for senior fives and senior one. So me, I went back, I went back home. 
preparing for what? Preparing to go back in senior five. That's when I received a call from uh, from coach of Budo. He called me. By that time, he was coach Seguya. He called me. Was like, Christine, I want you to come to Budo. I remember the first question that I asked him: How did you get my number? Then he, he told me, don't mind about that. Me, when I want a player, I can follow up a player. I want you to come and join us in Ibudo. And still they were talking with my brother. So I went to Ibudo. When I reached there, I remember even coach is the one who came for me. I was in Bulova. He came for, I was at my brother's place. He came for me and he told me, you come and we go. When we reached there, we found there a games teacher. He's called Mr. Kim. The first time I reached there, I was like, yes, this is the height that I want. I want to invest. I, I want to invest my money where I can see. So he liked me there and then. We went on court. By that time, I even I didn't know that there are those things of trials. Yeah, I just played not knowing that I was on trials. Yeah, mm. but I played well and my brother went back home. I stayed there. I remember they were also in the camp. So we were in the camp for, I think like for one month, still waiting for what? For school to start, for senior fives. Then when school started, I started my, my senior five in Wood. We trained so hard and went to nationals. When we went to nationals, I remember in Udo, they could step, they could stop on national level. They couldn't make it to East Africa, yeah. But that year we made it to East African Games. And we went, they were in Rwanda. That was my senior five. Then senior six, we played our district and we won that trophy of district against St. Mary's team and it was a great achievement for me. Then still we went for East African Games. I finished my senior six from Budo SS. After finishing my senior six, I went back home. When I went back home, I think I rested like for two weeks. They called us for national team under 21. We didn't make it. COVID came in and everything was dismantled. The first time I got my passport, it was 2022. We were organizing for common weather to play on the national team. But it was my first season in the club, and they called me for common weather. Yes. I was playing for Uganda Prison Netball Club, and they called me for common weather. But I didn't make it, but for me it was fine and I was happy. Because when they called me, before coming, a lot of people were encouraging me. They were like, we know you might not make it because you're just an upcoming player. And there are those people who made their names long time. So, and I was playing the same position with Swiss World Proscovia. So I couldn't play on her. Me, I came training, but knowing I won't, I won't make it to the final list because she was there. But me, me as a person, I was happy that I was summoned on the national team. Because I knew there were so many chances of me making it. I might not make it that time, but time was still there for me. I felt so good and proud. Because in Uganda we are so many people and there are so many netballers playing. But who am I to be summoned among those 30 people? So I felt so good and blessed yeah, to be among those people. And still among the 20 people that are now training, still I felt so good and just blessed. Because if it's not a blessing, I wouldn't have been here. One reason that made me to quit volleyball, the coach of volleyball wanted, wanted me to quit netball. And netball was my first priority. So I had to choose one. Okay. Now I'm going to represent so my country. Regret. No, I don't regret quitting volleyball. 
and I don't regret making netball my first priority. Yeah, but besides netball, I'm also trying basketball. I play for JKL Red Dolphins. But before I was in Red Jules, it was in lower division. Then we went for university games. When we went for university games, these people of JKLs, it's where they saw me.